Welcome to the Fox 54 Week in Review. I'm Sedona Meadows, standing in for Kanisha Dees as your guide to a week's worth of news that matters to North Alabamians just like you. Here's what's coming up for you in this weekend's edition. Marilyn Lance is stepping into the role of District 10 representative. I have a sit down interview with her where she'll talk to us about the first days on the job that lay ahead. Madison County is growing out of its existing infrastructure and keeping pace with the rate of growth is going to cost a pretty penny. We speak with a county commissioner about the plan. Plus, it's time to eat them up. The Trash Pandas have a brand new lineup of treats and eats at the concession stands. And Armo Carter is the lucky man who takes the Fox 54 taste test. That's all just ahead. But we'll start our recap once more in Decatur, where the six-month anniversary of the death of Steve Perkins was bookended by the third-party release of police body cam footage of the incident and the subpoena of 19 witnesses, including Police Chief Todd Pinion and City Councilman Hunter Pepper, ahead of former Officer Mac Marquette's murder trial. At the time of recording this program, we've learned a hearing on whether a gag order surrounding the trial will remain in place has been postponed until May. Let's get you up to speed. Today marks six months since Steve Perkins was shot and killed by a Decatur police officer and today the community remembers. This month we've seen a lot of developments in this case and just as recent as Wednesday we've learned a website published what is believed to be police body camera footage from the night Perkins was shot and killed. The energy level was high tonight as several people came together to honor Steve Perkins. They, they were marching and they're saying that they'll continue to demand justice just like they have been for the past six months. Now, Perkins supporters took to the streets chanting no justice, no peace. And a big message tonight was the need to breathe, to push and to rest. For six months, we've been demanding justice. For six months, we've been showing up, asking for transparency. For six months, they've been lying. Six months, they've been covering up things. And the Lord is so good that in the last six months, we've been getting more information that proves that we were right. Change must come. We will continue to breathe, to push, and to rest. And so what we need tonight, we need energy. Although it's been six months since Perkins was killed, um, time has not stopped the momentum in this community. The group says they will continue to demand justice. <laughs> Fallout from the third party release of the police body cam video believed to be from the shooting of Steve Perkins continues at tonight's Decatur City Council meeting. Speakers during public comment continue to call for the removal of police chief Todd Pinion and for overall change throughout the department. One speaker asked the council if they stood by their original opinions or if they would recant. Here are the responses. You recant. McMasters, let's talk with you. Yeah, I'm not recanting. I think you know where I stand. Black. I don't recant anything I've said. Okay. I still stand on what I said that exactly. uh, Todd Penny needs to go, that our culture is damaged in our police department, and I think uh, no different than City Hall. Culture starts at the top, mm -hmm. and if, if, if our culture at City Hall is damaged, culture of our police department, and again, don't get me wrong, and people have, have had debate with me because I've said that uh, we've got a lot of good police officers. I think the vast majority of our police officers are good officers, um, but I do think that the culture of our department is, uh, is weak. Council members refuse to comment on the body cam video or its contents. We've learned new details about the investigation into a space camp employee. The center shared in part, quote, there is no evidence of inappropriate behavior or malfeasance between any space camp staff and student campers. Also, quote, at no time were staff present in campers' bathrooms. Our policies and our facilities are designed to create space where campers may dress, shower, and use the restroom in private, end quote. The center also added that they received differing accounts on whether an employee spoke to campers on subjects that are prohibited, such as disclosing personal details, religious or political viewpoints. The center says they've added a section to their camper and parent evaluations to better capture and address any potential violations. All other policy violations under investigation were addressed as an internal personnel matter. The employee in question has been transferred to another job at the center. 
Well, we now know the identity of the man who barricaded himself in a home near Chestnut Grove Elementary for nearly six hours yesterday. Officials tell us Michael Pruitt was arrested and is being held without bond at the Morgan County Jail on a parole violation. According to a DPD spokesperson, the Alabama Bureau of Pardons and Paroles was trying to serve a warrant when Pruitt barricaded himself in the home yesterday afternoon. The heavy police presence prompted Decatur police to place nearby Chestnut Grove Elementary on lockdown. April is Autism Awareness Month and Autism Support of Alabama is gearing up for their annual Autism Acceptance Walk. The Huntsville Walk will take place on April 20th at the JC's Community Building from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Jenny Morris with Autism Support of Alabama says the walk is all about building community and offering resources to those who need it. Well, we will have our resource fair of different uh, providers and, and private schools and uh, day programs for adults with autism and service providers and people that impact all people at all ages with autism. For more information about this event and how to register, head over to fox54.com. Well, it's Community Development Week here in the Rocket City, and that means the city is overseeing improvements to a home thanks to federally funded grants and many willing volunteers. The Community Development Block Grant Program and the city's CDBG Home Maintenance and Rehabilitation Program funds improvements to handicap access accessibility and home repairs for eligible senior citizens and the disabled. Today, city employees and volunteers worked on a project on Magnum Drive. The home had rotten wood and is being transformed into a nice quality improvement for the homeowner in the neighborhood. It has to be an exterior maintenance issue. It could be a siding, it could be ultimately roofing or, or items in which, uh, which are deferred maintenance. This lady's got almost like a brand new house, a renewed uh, sense of pride. Every one of them have a new renewed sense of pride and the whole uh, block starts sprucing up based on one, one house. Organizers say thousands of homeowners in Huntsville have been assisted over the years. All right, a ribbon cutting held today at 8th Street Community. It was all for a new laundry facility for the residents there. The nonprofit specializes in helping those with disabilities have a place to live, get jobs, and other daily living things. The new facility has four commercial washers and dryers and will help teach residents how to use those machines as a part of their life skills training. There's so many hotels in the area, um, hospitals, thrift stores, places that have laundry facilities. And so we thought we would use it as life skills training, job skills training for our residents so that they could get jobs out in the community and be able to serve in the community and um, you know get back from that. So it ended up being twofold. The group says they do about 160 loads of laundry a week, so they're excited to have a new facility to meet those. Uh, when we get the funding set aside, and we start getting ready to move forward with a project. Uh, we try to get all of these steps in line and we never try to hold up a process. We're gonna have five major projects being worked on at the same time. So there's gonna be a lot of red cones out there on the road. I know it may be uh, a, an inconvenience uh, to the commuter, but yet at the end of the day, we have to take advantage of the dollars that we have and the process. And when we're ready to do construction, we need to move forward as quickly as possible. For Fox 54 News, I'm Kim McCoy. A group of women decided they weren't waiting until November to honor those who served our country. 52 veterans were honored today at the Tutfan Veterans Home. Our Jasmine Bird takes us to the celebration. The Twickenham Town chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution is honoring 50 Vietnam War veterans and two local World War II veterans who live at the Floyd E. Tut Van State Veterans Home. We served, we survived, and we're proud. Each recipient was presented a certificate of appreciation and a commemorative pen from the Department of Defense in gratitude for their military service. Meet Doris Cobb Norris. There I am. Wow, yeah, <laughs> I love that picture. The 95-year-old event honoree served in the Marine Corps, which eventually led her to her career path. Going in the Marine Corps in the early years of being an adult, 
added more to my life than any other one thing because I went to journalism school. That put me in a position to travel, to meet people. I've traveled all over the United States. Which also led to meeting many friends. I still have friends from World, from Camp Lejeune in 1955 to 1957. World War II veteran Robert Brazil was also honored at the ceremony. When you have people like this that uh, bring us together and uh, make these awards, uh, it you know, really, really touches us. Brazil recalls one of his most memorable duties during his time in service. We supported the Marines and help train them. And as for Cobb Norris. I'm proud of what I have done working with the military and with veterans. I'm very, very proud to be a veteran of the United States of America. In Huntsville, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. <laughs> Alabama House District 10's new representative, Democrat Marilyn Lands, has gained national attention after she flipped a Republican-held seat Tuesday. I was able to sit down with her this week to find out more about her and what she hopes to accomplish during this current legislative session and beyond. Marilyn Lands is a Huntsville native, a licensed professional counselor, and has a background in business and economic development. Now, as of this week, she's adding representative for Alabama House District 10 to her resume, as she'll be heading down to Montgomery in just a few days. I know a lot of the Madison County delegation and people from North Alabama who are down there, and I already have good relationships with them. But I think people are ready for just somebody to come in with some positive energy and shake things up a little bit, but in a good way. In this special election, Lands, who is a Democrat, defeated Republican Teddy Powell to win the open House of Representatives seat. I think we've been trending blue. I don't think anybody expected that, and, and we didn't expect to win by this much. And, you know, people are calling it a landslide, which I love because it's kind of a pun. Um, but I think it is a big moment for the state of Alabama, and I have heard so many people just in the past couple of days tell me how they have hope for Alabama again. Land's 2024 campaign had a big focus on reproductive rights, as she shared her own story of getting an abortion two decades ago, after genetic testing determined the baby had a genetic disorder and could not survive. It was very important to me because it's very personal. And as I shared my story, I have heard from so many other women who have faced similar situations or had miscarriages, ectopic pregnancies. Then when our Supreme Court uh, came out with the ruling on IVF treatment, more stories began to come forward. It just seemed like everything lined up for this to be the issue of the moment. And with this legislative session already underway, Land shares what she plans to do when she gets to the state house. I want to build strong relationships with everyone down there. I really want to be a champion for health care, particularly mental health care. I want to see us eliminate this grocery tax. Alabama is one of a handful of states that tax groceries. And I really want to see us improve our public education funding. A public education is our future. And I'm really an advocate for a strong public school system. When we asked Lands if she feels it's possible for Republicans and Democrats in Alabama to work together to tackle some of these topics, she says she's optimistic and offers a unique perspective. With my counseling background, I listen to people all the time. And I think that you need to fully understand the other side of it and the other argument. You can't just go down, locked into your agenda. Sometimes we need to change our minds. So I want to be open and listen and pay attention and be very thoughtful about the, the voting that I do down there. And she's ready to get started. I'm really looking forward to getting down to Montgomery next week and going to work and learning about this job because there certainly will be a learning curve and uh, I'm just ready to jump in.
you, Jordan. Well, one Athens mother whose son passed away in a car accident last year is keeping her son's legacy alive by teaming up with Calhoun Community College to make a difference by orchestrating a scholarship in his memory. Our Jasmine Bird tells us more about it. You're going to see me smile talking about Dylan. He was amazing. He loved life. He loved family. He had the funniest laugh. Whenever he used to tell me about all of his friends that he had, and I never believed him because nobody is supposed to know that many people. And when he passed away at the funeral, we figured out he was not lying. Katrina Flanagan is preparing for the second annual DMAC Fest in memory of her son, Dylan McMahon. We're going to have the stage here. We have, uh, it's going to be a rather large stage here. On the other side, we're going to have food vendors. Uh, the food trucks are going to be spread out over there. On this side, we're going to have all of the vendors. McMahon was killed in a car accident April 22nd of last year. After he died, we had food, live bands, and family fun out here. We had about 150, 200 people in a week. After, or, well, a week's worth of planning. So they were all like, we've got to do this next year and let's do it next year and let's donate it or do something with funds from it. This year, Flanagan is doing just that by partnering with Calhoun Community College to orchestrate the Dylan McMahon Memorial Scholarship. I went to Calhoun Community College's foundation and I told them what I wanted to do. And when I, when I told them, I said I wanted it to be 20 years old and older. So if you're 60 years old and you want a certificate, you can apply for it. I wanted it to where they did, it was an easy application process. If they didn't have their GED or diploma, they could get their GED or diploma through this and also get their certificate. If they had a criminal record, as long as the criminal record didn't include any serious felonies or any charges where they are not allowed on campus, they were open to get into the certificate, the, get their training. DMAC Fest is free to the public and all donations are welcome. The event will be held on April 20th at the Limestone Sheriff's Rodeo Arena. For more information, visit fox54.com. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. Now, Fox 54 Top Teacher, sponsored by Calhoun Community College. This teacher we're about to meet exudes pure joy. Her calling is in the world of cosmetology, making people feel beautiful. But virtually everyone who knows her says it's the beauty in her that transcends her talent. Meet this week's top teacher from Career Academies of Decatur, Portia Houston. So Ms. Houston, you have been selected as Fox 54's top Aww. teacher <laughs> for the Career Academy. Congratulations, baby. <laughs> Many people know Portia Houston for her bubbly personality. On the face when you get old like me, see the stain where he's pro teeth. But as a beautician too, she's put in some time as a dedicated cosmetologist. 23 years. Houston knew this was a talent from the very beginning. Oh, it was my calling since I've been a little girl. I always wanted to play with the dolls and all that stuff, right? But for her, becoming a beautician is more than helping people feel beautiful on the outside. It's the inside too. You're the uh, psychiatrist, the hairstylist, the friend, the sister, and sometimes the mama. Those are Mrs. Houston's qualities. Just yeah. ask culinary instructor Daryl Eccles. He nominated her as top teacher. She has a, a heart that's pure gold, right? And although she's the cosmetology instructor, she's a, a mom to everyone. She's always bubbly, and she just and she draws students to her and uh, well, everyone, not just students. And uh, uh, she's like a magnet. Truly a magnet indeed, because for Houston, regardless of when they graduate, the connection never ends. It's a lifetime relationship. Once they go on to the junior college or whatever, to private school, to be a cosmetologist, I'll forever be their mentor. I'll forever be there for them. I don't care where they go. They can always call me and I'll be there for them. Here's a message she shares with all of her students. You know, a lot of my seniors get ready to graduate. And I just want them to invest in it and love it. And I want them to get all they can out of it. I, I talk to them all the time and take it serious because this is a great career. Congratulations, Mrs. Houston. If you know a deserving teacher like her, be sure to nominate one at fox54.com. North Alabama's largest school district is set to undergo major renovation and expansion projects. Huntsville City Schools unveiling its 10-year proposed capital plan at the district's recent board meeting. The plan, projecting to cost a whopping 
$600 million. Some major changes in the proposal include building several new schools, such as a new Huntsville Middle School, while proposing to close Mountain Gap and Chapman Elementary Schools. Several renovation projects for multiple school gyms, cafeterias, classrooms, and activity fields are also in the plan. We think this plan will move our district forward. We want to be a top district, not only in our state, but in the nation. And we think this is a part of that plan to move us forward. And parents and guardians are welcome to attend the district's many community meetings this month to learn more about this proposed plan and provide feedback. Do note that tomorrow's planned meeting at Columbia High School has been canceled due to the severe weather threat and rescheduled for Monday, April 8th. A coalition of civil rights, voting rights, and disability rights organizations have filed a lawsuit against the state of Alabama over new absentee ballot restrictions. The suit is in an effort to block the law's criminalization of absentee ballot assistance. Our Justin Bird tells us more. We've been told that this bill is about ballot harvesting, but I think what's important to note is that SB1 doesn't deal at all with absentee ballots. It's all about applications. It's about access to the ballot. A league of civil rights, voting rights, and disability rights organizations are taking legal action, suing the state of Alabama over an absentee ballot bill that Governor Kay Ivey signed into law last month. And so although we've been told this is about ballot harvesting, it's about punishing neighbors for helping each other in this state, and that can't stand. Legal director at the ACLU of Alabama, Allison Molman, says this is a matter of neighbors helping neighbors. So if I have a neighbor who is elderly and she says, hey, can you help me fill out this absentee ballot application? If I go to help her with that absentee ballot application and she offers me $5 in gas money to have me take that ballot to the post office, both my 80 year old neighbor and myself would be subjected to felony consequences in Alabama. So what is the overall goal of this lawsuit as the absentee ballot law is written to go into effect on October 1st? It is our goal and aim with this lawsuit to ensure that SB1 is not able to go into effect, that Alabamians will not be criminalized, will not face the same criminal consequences as someone convicted of manslaughter or statutory rape. For Alabama Secretary of State Wes Allen, he stands in strong support of SB1. I'm dedicated to ensuring uh, fair, secure, transparent elections in the state of Alabama. Uh, you know, SB1, offers strong protections for Alabama voters against those paid political activists uh, who seek to profit off the absentee process. Uh, SB1 strengthens the absentee voting process. And, you know, I'm not backing up one inch on my support for SB1. It's another attempt by the state to just uh, eliminate, or erode the votes of the most vulnerable people. Alabama NAACP State Conference President Bernard Simulton is referring to the new absentee ballot restrictions signed into law by Governor Kay Ivey last month. Uh, a lot of the people who vote absentee are in nursing home or confined to home and they cannot get out. And if I'm not there next to Ken, I cannot, or if I do assist, you know, I can be criminally charged. In Huntsville, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. The opening day roster for the Rock City Trash Pandas is officially set, and today we got our first look at the 2024 squad. The club hosting Media Day this afternoon at Toyota Field. 24 players from last year are back this year in North Alabama. Among those players are seven of the LA Angels' top 30 prospects. That includes Nelson Rada, Caden Dana, Kyron Paris, and Ben Joyce, who are ranked one through four respectively. Andy Shashley knows how talented this group is and wants max production. It's a talented group. I mean, um, it's a talented group, and it, it makes you feel good about you know what we're what what max capacity for us looks like. But at the same time, too, it's like we're aware of all those things and, and working to try to keep our focus as small as we can keep it. All right, here are some key dates for the Rock City Trash Panthers. Opening day is Friday when they travel to the Tennessee Smokies for a 6 p.m. pitch. Home opener is next Tuesday against Birmingham. First pitch at Toyota Field is set for 635.
Welcome to Fox 54 Sports. Simon Williams joined by Mo Carter. It's one of the best days of the year and certainly one of most favorite days on the Fox 54 Sports calendar. It's Trash Pandas Meal Reveal Menu Debut. And we got three items for you to try, Mo. What are we working with here? All right, so we've got the Built Like a Bruin, which is kind of your mini burger with, you know, the fried onions. We've also got the Rolling with the Tide, which has an onion ring and some chicken tenders. And then we've got the Get Shucked, which is kind of like a mini po' boy with some very big shrimp. You know the rules. One bite, you got to test each item. Now let's get that review. Yes, sir. So let's go with the Built Like a Bruin first. Very tasty, very meaty, and the sauce inside is delicious. All right, we're going to roll with now the Rolling with the Tide. Of course, we would have some kind of Alabama-related name burger in the state of Alabama. It's got a chicken tender and an onion ring on it, so let's combine that with some bread. Mmm. This one's better than the other. For sure. <laughs> and it's just a roll tide in the background, too, so it just lets you know how good it really, really is. And then finally, the Get Shuck. This one is going to be whenever they play the Biloxi Shuckers, who we know have a history of being right here in North Alabama. And you see the big old shrimp right there, too. Mmm. Definitely like right there. Tastes a little, um, a little tartar sauce in there. And then also, oh, we got, wait, I take another, um, another bite because there's some sausage at the bottom of this, too. <laughs> So, some really good meeting items this year, uh, Simon. Well, let's let Mo digest. Be sure to check out fox54.com for the latest on the Rocket City Trash Pandas. At Toyota Field in Madison, Simon Williams, Fox 54 Sports. The Alabama Crimson Tide have rolled its way to the Final Four of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, and Fox 54 is here all weekend long. Nick Kuzma and Simon Williams are reporting from the Phoenix metro area with updates on air, online, and on social media. And whichever way the ball bounces on Saturday night, count on post-game coverage from the Locked On podcast crew and a breakdown of the game on Sunday with Sports Extra. Catch it on Fox 54, fox54.com, and Fox. 54 plus. Well, a nonprofit is on a mission to make sure people are getting their blood pressure checked in Huntsville. Healthy Heart Nation, based in California, launched the Pressure Project today. It's the first of its kind in the Rocket City. It's about meeting the community where they are, and one way to do it is at the barbershop. It launched at Rich Concepts Barbershop on Bob Wallace, providing awareness about blood pressure, which blood pressure readings are normal and which are not. You know, we know that a lot of times black men don't always go and get their blood pressures checked. And so if we come to them, it makes it a lot easier. Um, as a student, it's really important for us to reach out to our community and be able to actually do hands on work inside the community because most school work, you're just doing books. So it kind of gives us the opportunity to actually connect with the people around us and connect with the people in our community to actually know their needs. Well, Healthy Heart Nation also teamed up with Alabama and m University students, as you just heard there for this project. The next event is at the same location, April 26th from 11 a.m. to 1. Plans are to expand to other Huntsville locations in the future. Fox 54 Plus is also where you'll find special reports and extended interviews you won't find on air. You can also see digital series like Cooking with Styles and The Culture Report throughout the week. For breaking news and weather anytime, get the Fox 54 mobile app. For everyone here at Fox 54 News, I'm Stona Meadows. Thanks for watching.